Bonjour. Good afternoon. À toutes et tous. Good afternoon. Merci d'être là. Thank you for being here. First and foremost, I'd like to thank President Putin for accepting the invitation I extended to him a few days ago, right after I was inaugurated, to visit this most symbolic of all places where we are celebrating the 300th anniversary, almost to the day, of Peter the Great's visit to France. And so, to, uh, as he came to better understand the successes um, of a kingdom that had astonished the world. He came back to Russia with a few strong ideas, a few beliefs. Uh, a number of sketches also he had made, and which we're going to um, take a look at uh, together in a few moments from now. He uh, became a member of the Royal Academy of Sciences, um, from which he took inspiration with a real desire to modernize your country. Um, Peter the Great is truly the symbol of a Russia that wanted to open up to uh, Europe and draw from Europe all of its uh, uh, strengths, all of its greatness. And in fact, just uh, minutes ago, we mentioned a number of aspects um, of, um, of that when we um, had private talks. Um, and what's interesting about this history is that this dialogue between France and Russia has never ceased in then, a dialogue between our intellectuals, between our uh, cultures, which at the time sowed the seeds of a mutual friendship that has endured to this day with a number of important milestones in the person of some of our greatest artists and thinkers and heads of state. In fact, you'll see some of the catches to the monumental statue of Peter the Great statue, something you know well, Mr. President, in that uh, city in which you, you were uh, born and, and, and grew, a statue which uh, of which uh, your beloved city of St. Petersburg is so uh, proud. Well, you will see um, the preliminary sketches to that right here. And so, yes, this is a history of friendship, and I wanted to share that history with you today by inviting you to Versailles on this uh, very day. That was, in fact, at the heart of our talk today. A history is greater than we are, and this particular piece of history laid the foundation for French-Russian history. During the presidential uh, campaign, France has reaffirmed its interest in continuing a dialogue with Russia, which is why together, as we have just done, in fact, I wanted to have this chance to talk about these many subjects which are so important to the present day and to both our countries. As a result, we have had a chance, together with President Putin, to look at those various dossiers. Uh, on Syria, I have reminded President Putin of what our priorities were, and I think we can work together on that uh, path, and I think that's what we're going to do in the next few months. Our absolute priority is the fight against terrorism and eradicating terror groups, particularly ISIS. That is the main focus of our action in Syria, which is why, as part of the coalition, I want us to reinforce our partnership with Russia. Then, I want us to be able to organize a democratic transition, but by preserving a Syrian state. I have said it and repeated it. I feel that failed states in that region of the world are a threat to our democracies. And as we've seen in every case, they have led to the growth of terrorist groups. And so, once more, my intention is to ensure stability, a democratic transition with a 
major objectives in mind, which I have just reaffirmed to President Putin, the first of which is a very clear red line to us, which is the use of chemical weapons by whichever party. And so any use of chemical arms, which will mean immediate retaliation, at least uh, on the part of French forces. And in this domain, I want us to be able to share useful information and analyze it together so that we can get a better view of what's happening in the, in the, on the ground. And um, further, second point, uh, what France wants to make sure that humanitarian access ways are preserved in the whole region, because we know how complex the situation on the ground is, but we certainly do not want civilian, innocent populations to become the victims of what sometimes amounts to our collective inability to take sides. In that spirit, I want both our countries to reinforce their cooperation with the intent of finding a long-term inclusive solution over and beyond the eradication of terrorists, enabling a return to peace in Syria. About the situation in the Ukraine, we have uh, uh, mentioned uh, this dossier in detail, and we have talked about the um, so-called Minsk process. I think, I'm speaking under uh, President Putin's uh, uh, authority here, but uh, I think we could say that uh, it is our intention to hold a new Normandy uh, format uh, uh, round of exchange with uh, Germany and the Ukraine and to have a complete shared analysis uh, of the situation. And in particular, as part of this uh, Normandy format meeting, we would certainly uh, want to have a, a complete report by the Organization for European uh, Security and Cooperation. So those are some of the topics on which we have had a chance to exchange our views. And for my part, I have uh, reminded President Putin of my intention to get to a de-escalation of the uh, conflict as part of the uh, Normandy uh, um, uh, um, format and under uh, the um, Minsk regime. Furthermore, I have reminded President Putin of a number of uh, uh, topics that are very important to us and to our public opinions. I have reminded him of how important it is for France to make sure that uh, people in civil society, whatever their backgrounds, um, are respected. We've talked about LGBT people in che Chechnya, uh, but also uh, NGOs in uh, Russia. On uh, those topics, I have very clearly stated to President Putin what France's expectations are, and we have decided that together we would have a, a, a very regular um, monitoring of those issues. In fact, President Putin has shown me that he has taken a number of measures on the situation of LGBT people in Chechnya, including measures to find out what local authorities have done, how they have acted, and um, solve the most pressing issues. I will be very uh, attentive to those uh, issues. More broadly speaking, we have uh, expressed our intention to create more intense and more transparent exchanges between our civil societies, which will also be a way of uh, ensuring greater uh, dialogue, more constructive uh, dialogue between our, our public uh, society, civil societies. We have um, reiterated how important it is for members of our civil societies, including thinkers, intellectuals, uh, uh, to dialogue. And a forum of French-Russian civil societies will, as a result, be created. It will be the dialogue of the Trianon, if, if you like. Uh, if I may call it that, in reference to the exhibition we're going to see in, in minutes uh, from now, making it possible for our youth um, and our intellectuals and thinkers to exchange uh, more regularly. Uh, on the cultural plan or plane, um, last year was marked by a number of uh, 
major exhibitions, in particular the Louis Vuitton Foundation, together with the State Hermitage Museum in St. Petersburg and the Pushkin Museum, um, organized uh, uh, an exhibition. I want our painters, our musicians, our writers, and our scientists to be able to work together in the best possible conditions. In this regard, I want to make sure that our ministers for culture can work on this roadmap. In fact, Mr. President, I am happy to inform you that Francois Nissen, our recently uh, appointed uh, Minister of Culture, is first and foremost a great publisher, and in fact, she has uh, been instrumental in making a number of Russian uh, authors known to uh, French language uh, readers, because as a publisher, she has uh, had uh, Dostoevsky, Chekhov, and uh, uh, Tosso re-translated uh, into uh, French. Um, we will also work on uh, scientific, economic uh, partnerships in aviation, um, energy, uh, and other areas with projects that have been developed over the past years and uh, which uh, we will follow very closely. I will also uh, want to make sure that we fluidify the exchanges between both our countries. So here are a few things that I can tell us, ladies and gentlemen, about uh, the exchange we just had. Um, and certainly, uh, um, as I said uh, minutes ago, I want us to be aware of the fact that history is greater than us. This room here celebrates a number of military um, battles, but those battles, we should not forget, were often the result of misunderstandings and have created um, much havoc and uh, left many casualties. Um, so this history, uh, Mr. President Putin, is greater, uh, greater than us. And, um, I wanted us here in Versailles to be able to exchange on all of these issues uh, that are still part of our uh, present. And based on that, I wanted us to create a demanding um, and um, fruitful solutions that will help us move forward. Thank you for your attention. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, it's my turn to thank Mr. President, to thank him for his invitation and thereby allowing me to come to France and visit this magnificent palace of Versailles, which I'm seeing visiting for the first time. It's the image of French history. Uh, a history which brings us together. And it is the topic, the theme of the exhibition we'll be visiting to celebrate the 300th anniversary of the visit to France by Peter the Great, the reformer. Thanks to that visit, that visit was uh, the beginning, wasn't the beginning of relationships with France, between France and Russia, the relationship between France and Russia is much older than that. The, the French public probably remembers Queen Anne, who was the younger daughter of Yaroslav the Wise, who contributed to the development of France, and that laid the foundations of one of the Bourbon dynasties, the Valois, who also occupied the throne of Spain. But we talked, above all, about our bilateral relations, the relationship between Russia and the European Union, the problems which beset that relationship. And with the president, we have tried to find a practical joint approach to these various issues. The interests of Russia and of France go well beyond the current political situation. Our uh, economic relationships are, are, are very dynamic. None of the 500 French companies in Russia, in spite of all the difficulties and the restrictions and the sanctions, none of those French companies have left the Russian market. And we have seen an increase 
of interest in Russia by French companies. Last year, they showed an increase. French investments in the French economy last year reached $2.5 billion. The bilateral exchanges between our two countries progressed. Trade has increased by 14% last year and by 23 percent in the first uh, quarter of 2017. So with President Macron, we have had detailed discussions on humanitarian issues. We have decided that it is necessary to increase exchanges between young people uh, of Russia and France, students from Russia and France, with reciprocal visits, cultural exchanges, uh, language studies, so that our peoples can get to know each other better. I have noted that in Mr. President's entourage, there are a number of people who speak Russian, and I hope they are not specialists of the Soviet Union, but the specialists in Russia in the broad sense, in our language and in our culture, and this encourages us to adopt a positive approach, and I hope that we will that m even more people will understand us and will be able to develop our discussions on all questions of common interest to us both. The exhibition that we'll be visiting together represents certain features, certain objects linked with the visit of the Tsar in 1717, which was an important landmark in Franco-Russian relations, which established the foundations of Franco-Russian friendship. We had an agenda uh, dedicated to economic issues, but we also discussed the crisis in Ukraine. We discussed the possibility of a settlement of the Syrian problem. Of course, we have taken into account the extremely dangerous situation, in my view, notably the nuclear problem of North Korea, we are determined to look for a common approach to solving this problem so that the situation can be de-escalated, can be improved. And we are of the we hold the view that the priority is the fight against terrorism. Uh, the French president has talked about creating a working group made up of our delegations, which could work, uh, which would bring specialists uh, in from Paris and Moscow together. This is an approach which we support to find concrete solutions to the fight against terrorism, which is an extremely grave threat for both of our countries. As regards the Syrian issue, our position is well known. I presented it to Mr. Macron. It's impossible to fight against terrorism by destabilizing the state and the institutions of a state. It would, this would be incoherent, this would be illogical. I'm sure that we can strengthen our efforts to fight against terrorism and to get positive results. But I insist on the fact that we must act together in a very practical way to fight against the spreading of this uh, uh, terrible uh, disease of the 21st century. Peter the Great spent several weeks in France. I, in, it's my turn now to invite President Macron to visit Russia. I invite President Macron to Moscow. Thank you very much. We are marking the 300th anniversary of Franco-Russian relations, but in recent years there hasn't been much to celebrate, has there, in terms of Franco-Russian relations. This is obviously, this visit is a positive sign 
there is talk of a humanitarian forum. There is talk of an anti-terrorist commission. What other mechanisms could be created to foster cooperation between Russia and uh, France? Russia is often accused of intervening, of meddling in the elections in other countries. Uh, have you discussed that question? Did you talk about uh, those questions? We are celebrating the 300th anniversary of the visit of Peter the Great to France. This visit was the main issue, uh, the main topic uh, to mark the 300th anniversary. If there is a wish that I have to make, as I have already said, it is to restore to increase exchanges, to restore exchanges between France and Russia, to find the ways and means of working together on the key, the key issues which are on the agenda of the world today. We are capable, with our joint efforts, to try and settle a number of key problems together. As regards the question of meddling, the meddling of Russia in uh, the elections of foreign countries. We haven't discussed that question. And President Macron has shown no particular interest in that question. So we haven't discussed it. So the, for, as far as I'm concerned, this question doesn't even exist. The strategic and the economic dialogue that started a little over a year and a half ago must be pursued and strengthened. And, um, we also want to create this uh, joint working group on, on Syria, as we just informed you. And um, we both decided, as I will inform the Chancellor in the next few hours, uh, that we wanted to have a Normandy format uh, a meeting to uh, continue the Minsk process with uh, the presence of uh, um, OSC um, involvement. And those are uh, important things and things that must be built over time as far as the French elections. We, in fact, talked about it when President Putin called me to congratulate me. I'm a pragmatic person. We talked about that issue. I told President Putin what I had to say. He told me what he had to say. Now I'm moving ahead. Uh, what's really important to me is to solve specific, important issues, the issues, in fact, that we mentioned during this press conference. So when I've stated something once, it, uh, um, it is not, uh, I'm not used to coming back to those issues. Agence France Presse, Mr. Poutine, back in March, you had welcomed the Front National uh, candidate, Marine Le Pen, um, thus granting her at least tacit support in uh, the French presidential campaign. And then uh, something else that happened was the so-called uh, Russian hackers, or perhaps Russian hackers, um, story that would have interfered in the French presidential election, allegedly. And so seeing you both um, at this podium today, we certainly don't get the feeling that the French-Russian relation is very warm uh, yet. But um, uh, has this meeting contributed to um, a little bit of a rapprochement. Here's another question, though. Um, human rights, have you had a chance to directly broach that issue and make some progress, particularly in terms of Yan Barbero and the Russian journalist Roman Sochenko? Um, thank you for your answer. Uh, on this topic, and I will um, ask President Putin to compliment uh, what I said uh, uh, anyway he, he wishes. Uh, I don't want to comment on Mrs. Le Pen's visit uh, 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 to Russia. Um, uh, the only thing I have to say is that the French people, or the people, is sovereign in elections, um, and the French people uh, has not vindicated uh, Mrs. Uh, Le Pen. Um, and the rest is literature, as we say in French. That's the only important thing. Um, 
I don't believe the role of politicians is to make comments about your personal thermodynamics or intellectual um, disquisitions. Um, no, the, uh, the point of doing politics is um, talking about issues directly. Frankly, that's what we just did with President Putin. And we did have a chance to say a number of important things. Personally speaking, I have had a chance to mention many issues that I wanted to uh, raise with Mr. Putin, including things that I will not repeat before you, because that is standard diplomatic practice after all. And so we do have disagreements, but at least we were able to share uh, about issues on which we do have disagreement, and we have been able to make progress towards building shared action, and we have to do that, because if we don't create the right conditions, we will never make headway on the issues at hand. If we do not have a a frank, uh, sincere dialogue, which sometimes, of course, uh, leads you to uh, um, talking about things you disagree on. Well, if you don't do that, if you don't have that dialogue, you never go anywhere. In terms of Syria and other uh, topics, we have mentioned them today. Uh, but of course, uh, for reasons that you will understand, it would not help those issues for me to publicly reveal what we what we said. Uh, the more so as I'm personally keen on seeing um, active progress on these issues, and um, I, I don't want to do anything that would jeopardize uh, progress on these issues. The first part and the last part of your question on hackers, regarding hacking. I'd like to go back to the way you put your question. You said the following thing. It is said that perhaps there was some intervened interference of Russian hackers. How can I comment on such a thing? We say that, people say that. Perhaps there were Russian hackers at work, perhaps not. What conclusions can we draw from such uh, words? The press is free to speculate on such thing. That is even part of the raison d'être uh, of the press, which is to uh, inform the, the public of such things. But uh, it's uh, uh, an avenue that leads to dead, uh, uh, deadlock, to an impasse. Uh, uh, when you are dealing with facts that have not been confirmed. Regarding the second part of your question, uh, the, regarding Ma Marine Le Pen, it wasn't the first time that Marine Le Pen came to Russia. She has visited Moscow several times. And our points of view on preserving the identities of European peoples, the strengthening the sovereignty of European countries, there are solid foundations for such positions. My positions are not always identical to those of my colleagues. I'm always very open when I express my views. We are well. We are prepared to welcome anybody at any time. If Madame Le Pen asked uh, us to to meet her, why would we have refused? Why should we have refused? The main thing for us was that she has always in public expressed her position in favor of a rapprochement with Russia. And it would have been very strange on our part to refuse to uh, receive, to have a meeting with a leading political figure in Europe who wishes to develop good relations with Russia. It doesn't mean that we tried to in influence the result of the French presidential elections, this is impossible. We were fully aware of the realities of political life in France. Do you think that we don't know uh, what the opinion polls say do you, in France about presidential elections? Or do you think that we ign are ignorant of uh, the results of the elections? Last thing, we're not kids, we're not children. We uh, have take a serious view of political situation. And there are the fundamental interests of the Russian and French peoples which are at stake. Those are the issues 
which we which preoccupy both the French president and myself.